Hey everyone, this is Anup Marwadi from Hypertrends Global Inc. And today we are going to show you how you can enable time series databases, um, particularly Timescale DB in PostgreSQL on Microsoft Azure. And we're going to walk uh, through a very quick example and I'll show you how easy it is to really create um, amazing time series queries. So the first thing you need to do obviously is install Timescale DB. Uh, I don't want to get into why because there's a lot of articles around that will show you why Timescale DB is so cool. So we're going to go straight to the meat of it. I'm going to log into my Azure portal and go over to the PostgreSQL database that I have. Um, so where you need to go to enable this is under server settings, server parameters, and you will see a um, couple of different things. One is Azure extensions, and I went ahead and I installed Timescale DB here. And then the other one, which you will probably need to search, is the shared uh, preload libraries. So in there, you will see the Timescale DB option. Just go ahead and turn that on. After you hit save, it's going to ask you to restart the database server, which is understood. So once all of that is done, that's pretty much all you need. I mean, the beauty of this is you'll be able to utilize Timescale DB straight from PostgreSQL or any other UI utilities that you use. So I'm using PG Admin, as you can see here. I'm connected to um, the server, which I just showed you on Azure. And the first thing you need to do, obviously, is to create an extension if one doesn't exist for Timescale DB. So go to the database that you want this enabled on. So I'm going to go in here, for example. I've just created one called TB Dev. This is for ticket blocks. And I'm going to enable an extension called Timescale DB. So you can run that query, and you're good to go. The next thing you want to do, obviously, is figure out what you want to trend on. In this case, I'm just trending on orders. Um, orders uh, over time, that's what I want to do. And I want to do it specific to tenants. And so the fields that I want, I'm just going to create a very simple PG SQL table. There is nothing fancy going on in you. I'm going to take a tenant ID, cart ID, which I want to retain, obviously. You can add as many columns as you want. I think I added some more um, order code, currency code, grand total, um, all of that. The most important one to know is that you need to have a time, um, a time column. And so the one that I'm using obviously recommended is the timestamp without time zone, and I'm calling it purchased at. This just tells me all the uh, different date and times when the order was purchased. And so the tenant ID, cart ID, purchase date, grand total, obviously I realized I was missing a few, so I added code uh, and currency code in there. Once this is done, you will get a table, and then that's when the fun starts. Now you want to enable this table to work with the timescale DB. And so what you need to do is create a hyper table. And the command for that is just very simple. Create hyper table. I'm just going to select that. And then I'm going to say, this is my table that I want to turn into a hyper table. And the time column is purchased at. In, and, and that's it. Sometimes that's all you'll need to do. And obviously, I'm, I'm putting a default indexes of false because I don't want it to create indexes automatically. I want to define my own indexes. But you can literally get away by just saying, I want to do a select um, create underscore hyper table and just give it the name of the original table and then the time call. If you have multiple, obviously, you know, you, you'll need to create multiple of those um, hyper tables if you want. Um, so, and then you can have additional dimensions. So in this case, all of our orders are obviously separated by tenant ID. So what I'm doing is I'm creating another dimension on that data. Uh, and I'm saying, hey, tenant ID is another dimension. I'm creating four partitions for that. And then again, I'm going to create a hyper table. Once the hyper table is done, then I'm creating indexes. So I'm going to create an index on the orders table. I'm going to say, Tenant ID and purchase at in descending order is one index. Grand total purchased at again in descending order is another index. That's pretty much all you need to do. And at that point, you can start running your queries. And so how amazing 
it is to run queries, man, I'm just blown away. Um, for example, you can you have a function called time bucket and you can put any time buckets, one hour, 15 minutes, 0.5 hours, whatever you want around a field. And then you can call it whatever you want. And in this case, I'm just doing a count of orders over time for a specific tenant. And I would, you know, have to write all the queries of time in between and this and that. Now I just go and do, you know, 12 hours if I want now, as time buckets. And then the outputs, it will just return that every, oops, oh, what am I doing here? Hold on, time bucket. Um, that should work. Yeah. Um, so every 12 hours, it will tell me what the number of orders placed are. So um, you can see certain days I can do 15 minutes if I care. And it will tell me the results of the number of orders placed every 15 minutes. You can see 930, uh, you know, 15, 45. Especially towards the end, I had a lot of data here. So you can see I had 13 orders here. In the next 15 minutes, I got that. I got four, four. So that's all I need to do. I can do one hour. And it will give me records every hour. 16, 18, 19, 20, 21. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, and then obviously I can keep doing stuff. So let's say I wanted to do um, total sales, you know, every hour. So I can just do that and I instead of this, I can do sum of grand total as uh, total sales from order group by date purchased. I should also do, I can also do currency code if I want, uh, right? So I may have to do currency code, sorry. Um, and I can just run this. Hopefully that works. Yeah, there you go. So it's telling me all all these sales every hour based on a currency code. Obviously, this only applies if you have multiple currencies. I do. We have USD and MXN right now for a given tenant. So I can now do these. And again, I can do point. Uh, you know, I want to do fifteen, or I want to do thirty minutes. I, I like keeping things in whole numbers, so I'm just going to do it that way. And then I can just do that. And you can start seeing that I can now see my sales broken down in dollars. And I can see them uh, with time buckets like that. So this is just one way of doing things. Obviously, there is a lot more you can do. Um, you can figure out trends over windows of time rolling window, sliding window. There's a lot of cool things that you can do. But I just wanted to show you very quickly how this worked. And this is a very simple extension. You can take your existing tables and then you can massage those tables to work directly with time series. Um, I ran into some issues where, you know, I had a primary key, for example, I had to get rid of that. Um, so I wouldn't recommend just taking an existing table and turning it into, well, you can, that's what they say you can, but I would still say I, I would copy the data over into a new table and then turn it into um, a time scale database. Um, so if you're doing an existing legacy table, that's what I recommend. Um, try it out with, you know, copying the data over into a new table. Uh, if you can figure out the identity primary key issue, I'd be happy to hear about how you resolve that, but I see that um, it looks like there needs to be some additional indexing done. And I might be able to get away with that, but I just haven't tried that yet. So um, one way or the other, I'm gonna keep posting more information about this and we'll see how that goes.